How do we have a conversation with a non-believer? Somebody that doesn't want to listen. Somebody that doesn't want to believe. Somebody that doesn't even know the evidence. How do we have a conversation with somebody to convert them? How do we have a conversation with somebody to show them that there may be something wrong in the way they're thinking? How do we show them that there is a flaw in the way they process how this world operates? Sometimes when we are in the world, people don't want to listen. People are not ready for the message. Sometimes preaching to people is a double-edged sword. Why? Because some people are eventually going to hear you and believe. Others will not. And that will earn them greater judgment because they heard the word and they still didn't believe. Like Judas, like the Pharisees, like the Sadducees, like the high priests. You and me can talk all we want. We can win an argument pretty easily. But the harder thing is to win souls. Souls convert only through Christ. Winning arguments is pretty easy. Winning a debate is pretty easy. Winning a soul, much more difficult. Why? Because winning a soul, that means somebody internally is convinced. You didn't just beat him in a debate. You didn't just prove him wrong. No, you actually showed him the things he was doing wrong. And actually, that's much harder to do because no one wants to admit they're wrong. No one wants to arrive to the conclusion that for the past 20 years, 30s, 40 years, they've been wrong about how they did life. No one wants to come to that realization. Everybody is stuck in their own thinking, wanting to believe that the way they're living is the best way to live and it's the proper way to live so when we approach these conversations we need to be careful we need to study how to make the other person reach truth on their own without me pushing them or without me spelling it out for them what does that mean i need to make sure that the other side reaches the conclusion that hey maybe i should look into this maybe the person in front of me the christian in front of me has a point maybe i should do more research maybe i'm wrong once the person in front of us has that realization then we're on the right track but in order to make anybody in front of us have this realization we must not be pushy we must not throw a huge stone on their head we must just leave a little stone in their shoes not every conversation we have needs to arrive to hey Let's convert you right now and let's go get baptized, right? We can't, we don't want to hit a home run every single time we're speaking to somebody. I'll repeat, we don't want to hit a home run every time we're speaking to somebody because it's just not possible. It's not realistic. Not everybody you speak to will convert. Not everybody you speak to, you're going to reach the end goal with them, right? You're not going to explain the whole Christian doctrine every time you speak to somebody, that's just not possible. Not every conversation will reach that far. Sometimes it's about the little things. It's about making them, in a way, doubt the way they're thinking. So maybe they research on their own. They take a second look at the way they're processing things. That's all it is. Tactics, right? We're gonna be going over tactics. Tactics of how to have a conversation, how to convince somebody of something. We're gonna be mainly going off or based on a book called Tactics. It's a beautiful book in apologetics. It teaches you how to answer and how to converse. Not just what to answer when somebody says something to you. It's teaching you what's the mentality. What should be your mentality when approaching these conversations? Sometimes when we're overzealous, we are a stumbling block to non-Christians. When we're over aggressive in our conversations, we are the ones hindering them from listening to Christians ever again. We need to have this proper balance of trying to show them the truth by making them reach the truth on their own, while at the same time not being pushy, not being overzealous, not being over aggressive, not hurting the person's ego so much to the point where they don't want to listen anymore. Because all you're doing is you're breaking them. You're pulling them apart. You are attacking every single cell in their being. You're attacking their ideology. You're attacking the way they did life for so many years. So we need to be careful. This is a very personal matter. People invest all their livelihood in the, their ideologies, in the way they're thinking. They spent their entire lives 
worshiping literally the way they think. So when we have these conversations, they're sensitive and we need to be careful not to cross any lines. So how should we do that? Let's discuss. Tactics. The first thing we need to identify is that our job title is fishers of men. So we are all called to be fishers of men. We are all called to preach, whether by action, by being images of Christ in the world. And that's how we preach. We show Christ to others. We show God to others through our actions, through our love, through our witnessing of the truth in, in, in form of daily activities and daily witnessing. And then we also have the preaching of the word by word of mouth, teaching others about the true God and how he operates, okay? Sometimes in the world we live in today because there are so many sects and so many heresies and so many denominations that kind of twisted the truth. The image of God in people's heads is very distorted. People think God is an angry man sitting up there judge, judging and trying to find an excuse to send you to hell. When in reality, God is a loving God who loved us to the point of death, loved us to the end, loved us to the point where he sent his only begotten son to die. So we may have life, loved us, and because of his love, respects our wishes. If we don't want to be saved, he's going to respect those wishes. If we tell him, we don't want to spend eternity with you. He's going to respect those wishes. And that's judgment, right? He respects our wishes. You don't want him in your life. Eventually, he loves you enough to give you your wish, right? He gives you your freedom. He has always given us our freedom and he will always give us our freedom to the end, to eternity. So we need to be having both. At all times, we need to be images and, and witnessing to Christ through our actions. And also, we need to also be images and witnessing to Christ through word of mouth, through preaching, through these conversations. But how should we have these conversations? Our job description is to be a light and a witness. When we are a light, light exposes darkness. Light does not forcefully attack darkness. Light automatically exposes without being super aggressive. Light by nature exposes. So how should we do that? How should we not be overzealous and how to not be over aggressive, but at the same time be a light? Because when we are a light, of course, you can't have light and darkness in the same sense, in the same room. So therefore, again, if we're a light, we're, we'll automatically expose darkness without telling darkness, oh, you stink. Okay, so how should we do that? Okay, our task is you and me want to put a stone in somebody's shoe, not drop a rock on their head. The goal from every conversation is to make sure the other person comes out from this conversation with a little rock, a little stone in their shoe, just a little bit, little one, something that they ponder about after the conversation is over, something they think about after the conversation is over. We don't just grab a huge rock and drop it on their head. We don't attack them viciously to the point where they are suffocating. No, we need to just open the door for next conversations, open the door for other conversations, open the door of their heart to more conversations, to more digging, to more aspirations of knowing the truth. Love opens the door truth converts if we don't have love in these conversations the door will never be open therefore even if we say truth but instead of saying truth in small doses so we can get to the heart we we drop a huge rock of of truth on their head we're going to crush them instead of converting them we're going to actually turn them out away from christianity and they're never going to listen to christians ever again they're never going to want to have a conversation again they're never going to want to listen to the truth ever again because again they're going to think Christians are vicious and they're um, overzealous and they're too irresponsible and they're, 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 they're not loving, right? So we need to love because love will open the doors of the heart. Love will open the doors of the heart. Truth will convert. So we need both together, love and truth. Eventually, truth also opens the doors of the heart and love converts, right? So they all sync. They all go uh, hand in hand, right? 
we always need both they are the two strands of dna that are inseparable why because love and truth are one person eventually they're christ so we need both right and again both convert both open doors but in in the world we live in today we need love to open the doors of the heart to open the doors of conversation and then drops of truth little bit of truth streams of truth little bit little by little truth in order to slowly go through this process of conversion go through this process of trying to leave a little stone in somebody's shoe so they can go and look on their own dig on their own search on their own so eventually they reach the truth on their own because let me tell you a quick secret no one converts because you told them the truth they know already that christianity exists they may not know specifics and that's where we come in but they already know christians exist right the goal is to make them know that something is wrong in their ideology you need to start helping them know how to think you need to help them learn how to think you need to help them figure out that they should consider maybe there are better ways of thinking maybe i am missing something here maybe i should dig more maybe the other person is right maybe i should listen with an open mind with an open heart not just listen to criticize but listen to understand and that process takes time and that process needs effort and that process needs us to be very patient not trying to reach a home run every time we speak but being patient in our every conversation so tactics are not manipulative tricks slick or clever ways to belittle or humiliate another person instead tactics are used to gain footing to maneuver to expose the person's bad thinking so you can guide him or her to the truth okay the goal is not to tell them the truth the goal is to help them reach the truth on their own because that's the only way they're going to convert if you spell out the truth for them i mean th they already know that right you need to tell them you need to help them figure out on their own the truth right you're telling them the truth without telling them the truth you're telling them the truth by making them reach the truth on their own